anyone who clicked on this thinking that I drew the curtains, I assure you, they're real. Well, at this point, the hope of people not rolling their eyes at this video is out the window. Today, I'll be using this canvas drop cloth to make some strip curtains for a walkthrough haunted house attraction. Realistically, I could use just about any fabric for this project. I chose this drop cloth because the price for the amount of fabric that I'd get is better than at a fabric store. Also, for my purposes, I don't want the fabric to be too light. I want the fabric that I use to have some weight to it so that it hangs down properly. If I did want something that fluttered in a breeze for a specific effect, I would get the appropriate fabric for that particular instance. But for this project, I'm using this drop cloth because it's a heavier and more durable fabric. To start, I'm going to make two marks on my workbench that are three feet apart from one another. This way, I can find out which side of the fabric is which dimension. It turns out that this side is the nine foot side, and I mark it with a marker so I don't forget. The full size of the drop cloth is nine foot by 12 foot. To get the best use out of my material, I want to make six pieces that are four foot wide and four and a half feet long. This means cutting the side that is nine feet long in half. Fortunately, this sheet of fabric has a seam right at the midway point. To make the pieces that are the four and a half foot length, I cut right along the edge of this seam on either side so that I can remove this bulky section where the fabric overlaps. Next, I use my three foot marks to check the other dimension to make sure that it is a full 12 feet, and it is. This way, I can be assured that when I make my cuts at four feet, each piece will be about the same size. I then make two marks on my workbench that are four feet from one another to make measuring go a bit faster. I make a mark on the fabric and carefully fold it over from that mark. Once neatly folded, I carefully cut along that fold to make my four foot wide section. I then repeat that process until I have the six pieces of fabric that I'll need. With the first 12 foot by four and a half foot piece of fabric cut down to size, I move on to cutting up the second 12 foot by four and a half foot piece of fabric. Now that I have all six pieces cut to size, I can start cutting the strips for the first curtain. This first one will be circus themed, so I'm going to cut the strips at 12 inches wide. To start, on either side, I measure up one foot from what will eventually be the top of the curtain. From those points, I make marks across at one foot, two foot, and three foot. I then flip the fabric around and repeat the same three measurements along what will eventually be the bottom of the curtain. Next, I carefully fold the fabric between the two matching points and cut the strips out along the fold. With the front half of the curtain cut, I can move on to cutting the strips for the back half. For this piece, I follow the same steps but with one change made. Instead of making marks at 1 foot, 2 foot, and 3 foot, I will make these new marks at 6 inches, 18 inches, 30 inches, and 42 inches. This will make it so that these strips will be offset by half compared to the first strips. Next up is sewing. Lots and lots of sewing. I would have done this step myself, but Mama Squirrel Ann didn't want me messing up her sewing machine, so she offered to do everything herself. Basically, the idea behind this step is to sew a tight stitch all the way around the edge of each strip. The stitch is done at about an inch to an inch and a half from the edge of the fabric. The reason for it to be set back from the edge, instead of folding over and hemming the edges one would normally do, is because over time I do want the edges to wear and fray. Hopefully, the line of stitching will help keep the fabric from completely unraveling. Or, at least long enough for me to get my money's worth of use out of these curtains. Plus, the distressed and frayed edges will add to the overall look that I want for my rundown and creepy circus. With all of the sewing around the edges completed, and the front and back pieces sewn together, it's time to paint everything with bright fluorescent paints. The circus maze that I'm slowly working on putting together is going to primarily be a black light attraction. The circus maze that I'm slowly working on putting together is going to primarily be a black light attraction. 
So in keeping with that, I'm going to paint this set of curtains with UV reactive paints. Considering that my work shirts and pants have paint all over them and have gone through the wash many, many times, I'm fairly confident with using paints on these fabrics. Also, if it ever does wash off or fade, it can always be painted again. Oh yeah, here's a look at the paints that I'm using. With the front four strips fully painted, it's time for me to paint the back half of the curtains. To access them, I flip the fabric that was in the front up and out of the way so that I can paint the same side of the fabric for the piece in the back. I'm only going to paint these curtains on one side. That way, it will have a front and a back. The reason that I'm making them directional is because I want the side with the cut in the middle to be on the front. Additionally, I can hand a tote box full of curtains to members of my build crew and give them an easy to follow instruction like colors face forward and hopefully the curtains will get put up facing the right direction. Lastly, I install brass grommets along the top with an approximate one foot spacing from one another. And with that, this curtain is done. With the circus curtains finished, I'm going to go back and make a new set, but made slightly differently and decorated with a completely different theme. The basic structure of these curtains is made the same as the previous ones, but with the exception that I cut the strips at 8 inches instead of 12. I meant to make them 9 inch strips, but somehow I got myself mixed up and made them at 8 inches. Whatever, moving on, I can make the next one at the correct size. For the first curtain, I made marks at 8 inches, 16 inches, 24 inches, 32 inches, and 40 inches. For the second piece of fabric, I cut the strips at 4 inches, 12 inches, 20 inches, 28 inches, 36 inches, and 44 inches. Cutting the strips at those measurements gives me the same half overlap as the circus curtain. The reason that I'm making the strips on this curtain smaller than the circus curtain is because I want this one to be decorated for a Haunted Mansion theme. I feel that the smaller strips would look better and work better in the classic setting of an old rundown, musty, and dusty haunted house. I hope that just by making a few modifications here and there, I can show how these curtains can be very versatile in fitting in with just about any haunted attraction theme. The only limitation on making them fit with a theme is what my imagination can come up with. With all of the sewing done for this set of curtains, I install the same brass grommets into the same one foot spacing as the circus curtains. Now that the curtain is fully put together, I can move on to painting and detailing it for the Haunted Mansion theme. I prepared some spray bottles with washes of latex paint. The colors that I chose are black, dark gray, and white. The fourth bottle is just filled with water. I've already gone ahead and soaked the fabric in some water so that the entire thing is uniformly moist. This way the paints will soak into the fabric instead of sitting on the surface. These colors will fit in nicely with that ghostly atmosphere that I'm looking for. As I'm spraying the paints, I'm also adding water with my sprayer to smooth out the hard edges and make everything blend together nicely. Now that the different washes have had time to fully dry, it's time to add the fake blood. But before I do, I take a moment to use a red marker to write out a scary message on the curtain. This way, I'll know that my letters will fit the way that I want them to. For this step, there really is no right or wrong way to do things. It's really just up to how I think it will look best. Well, if I didn't already feel like some kind of crazy murderer before this, painting my hand with a very realistic looking fake blood definitely felt like a strange thing to be doing. And with that, this Haunted Mansion curtain is finished. Now it's time for the final curtain. I promise this is the last one for this video. Just like the previous two, I make marks on both ends. I'm going to make the strips for this curtain 6 inches wide. That means that I make marks on this sheet at 6 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches, 30 inches, 36 inches, and 42 inches. The second sheet of fabric gets marked at 9 inches, 15 inches, 21 inches, 27 inches, 33 inches, and 39 inches. I left the strips on either side of the second sheet at 9 inches because I didn't feel like making 3 inch strips would add anything to it. 
The sewing on these two curtains was a lot. It comes in at being almost double the amount of sewing as the circus curtains. So thank you to Mama Squirreland for helping out with this portion of this project. I do want to make one last note about the sewing portion of this project. Obviously, I'm not a seamstress or a person who knows anything about how sewing is supposed to work. So if the way that I'm going about this is wrong or is not going to work as intended, constructive criticism in the comments would be helpful when I make more of these in the future. The reason that I chose to make these strips so skinny is because I'm going to decorate these curtains for use in an Egyptian-themed haunted attraction. Since the skinny strips remind me of a mummy's bandages, I figured that it would be a good fit for this theme. To decorate it for the Egyptian theme, I found some really cool stencils on Etsy. I picked up a set of alphabet stencils, as well as a few others, to add some extra visual interest to the design. I just want to say this up front, I'm not an anthropologist or an Egyptologist. I just pick stuff that looks cool for a haunted attraction. I'm aware that whatever I'm putting on here probably is inaccurate. I don't really care. I'm just going for what is visually exciting. Is first coating them with mold release before spraying them with spray paint. I haven't really tried to peel the paint off as of yet, but initial attempts indicate that it didn't really help. On a fun note, I did use the alphabet stencils to write a secret message. The first person to decipher what that message is and put it in the comments will win the glorious prize of being the first person to figure it out and write it in the comments. Lucky you! After all of the spray paint had time to fully dry, I again soaked the fabric in some water so that it was evenly moist so I could apply the color washes. This time, I used the same dark gray as before, a light tan color, and a dark brown color. I chose these colors because I wanted to have the fabric look sufficiently aged, but still have some of those warm colors that I associate with an Indiana Jones style adventure movie. With the front half done, I flip it over and finish up the back half. And there they are. I think they turned out really great. Each one looks exactly as how I pictured it in my head before I got started. Every professional haunt that I've ever gone to consistently has some version of these types of curtains throughout their entire haunt. They can be really useful in helping an actor hide so that their scare can be just that extra bit more effective. I also feel that they drive up the suspense a bit for the guest because it limits how far ahead of themselves that they can see. If a guest can't see what's waiting for them around the corner, the actor has a much better chance of getting that scare. Here is a little daytime demonstration of what a haunt looks like with curtains in place. Here's a little demonstration of the same haunt without the curtains. Which do you like? Of course, there are many more themes and endless amounts of ways that I could decorate these things. If I wanted to, I could of course mix and match any of the things that I did. The circus curtains could be distressed and aged, or have fake blood. The Egyptian curtains could also have fake blood, or even invisible blacklight paint that reveals a hidden design. 
Really, the sky's the limit. I'll end this video with this last clip, which is a real-time demonstration of how I hang the curtains in my haunt. I just use five screws with five fender washers and they're ready to go. I hope that this project inspires everyone to make something cool, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.